What's going on, everybody? My name's Danny, a.k.a. Captain Sin. This is episode two of Chatting with Captain. We're sitting here with former motionless and white keyboard player, now owner of Strange and Unusual, Noir, and about five other businesses, I would say, at this point. Josh Balls. How are you doing tonight? I didn't know that was your real name. I thought your your legal name was uh, Captain Sin. I've gotten to the point where most people only know me by that. (laughs) That's hilarious. (laughs) I mean, I, 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 for years, people thought that Balls was a stage name. They're like, and then as I got older, I would, I kind of stopped. Like, I used to always introduce myself as Balls, always, because I was in the music scene. So right. it was like something easy to remember. And like, it, it was weird. Like, I'll start introducing myself as Josh now, which I hate. <laughs> um, and it's just like, so what was Balls all about? I'm like, it's my last name. I'm like, I was born with that fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, but it, it ended up being, like, the best thing to ever happen to me was having that name because, as you know, as a as a keyboard player, um, Michael Cerrone with a, with a sub. What a man. I yeah, appreciate um, that. Oh, also, everyone who's watching right now, I have all my notifications turned off since we're putting this on Spotify and everything. I don't want a bunch of notification sounds to pop up, but I do see everybody doing anything, and I appreciate it. Just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, that makes sense. And then, uh... Um, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway... Um, what was, I just start this off this way. Usually, uh, mm-hmm. the first album that set you on the path that you're on right now. Um, Atreyu. It wasn't the curse. It was, it was the one before the curse. So lip gloss. Suicide back. notes. Suicide notes. Yeah. Yes. Lip gloss back. Yeah. Suicide notes was the kind of, I remember sitting in my friend's living room and he brought up his computer we were like on like live wire whatever like bullshit <laughs> uh thing you get music on and i remember we like stumbled across atreyu and i was like what is this i was like this is so heavy like what is going on but prior to this i was in middle school and i my friend joey Cresho was uh we did this uh, history project and what we did, and I was, to go, to go back and think of this, which is also absurd, is we were in middle school, so we had to be like 12, um, 13 maybe. Um, we did our history project on when you turn songs backwards and it oh, says shit, yeah. like demonic things. We did a, a history project as like children, um, which was really weird, but he introduced me to like, uh, no, you know what? It wasn't Suicide Notes. It was him. It was oh nice um, razor blade romance. Yes, him was like what kind of did that? But yeah, he introduced me to him, Cradle of Filth, Demi Borgia, uh, and 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 as a twelve year old, I was like, I don't get this. <laughs> like when he was showing me to Cradle, I was like, I don't get this. This is too heavy. But then I listened to he showed me him, and so I started listening to him, and then from him I listened to Atreyu, which turned me on the path of like heavier stuff, and it like then got to that Cradle of Filth and that Demi Borgia. But I was a, a, a young a young buck, you know, yeah. so it was really weird. But, yeah, I would say him, um, Razorblade Romance, was, like, my introduction to, to all this world. This I remember having a, pil, a, a poster of Vilvalo with, you know, five different layers of a hoodie on and a beanie on. I was like, I never took off a beanie <laughs> I still, yep, then. same. Yep. <laughs> I would say mine was close to that. Mine was Waking the Fallen. Like, when I first heard Unholy Confessions for the first time, that was... Because I wasn't really listening to really heavy music at that point in time. Yeah. But I'd heard that song, and I was like, holy shit, this is great. And then I bought the album the very next day, and that was just, like, the dive into that type of genre, I guess. Yeah. So... Uh, Melanie Has Heart. You got to see him in Philly a few years ago. Was it on their last tour? And was it at the... Fillmore? Because if so, I was there, and it was great. <sighs> Um, we actually did a tour with him, and it was awesome. Oh, that would have been um, sick. I was terrified to talk to anybody, <laughs> so it was I just I just hid the whole time. But um, no, yeah, I mean, Avenge was uh, it was huge for me as well. It's it's weird to now fast forward to now having conversations with those guys and some and touring with a lot of the bands that m- you know made me who I am today, which is crazy. That, I asked Bobby the same thing. I was like, "What's it like to like go from?" being I, I wouldn't say idolized but to like look up to that and then 
20, 30 years later, you're just friends with everybody. It's like, it's got to be crazy. I don't know if you still, do you still fanboy at all at times yes. with certain people? Definitely. Like, <laughs> uh, it, it's one of those things where you're just like, what is happening to my life? Like, what is, and it's, it's, it's weird because you get kind of numb to it a little bit. But especially when I saw Bill Vallow walk past me and we were like, we were on tour with him, I was like, I'm not talking to this dude. <laughs> like, he's too cool. Like, way too cool for me. And then that's the same thing with like, we did a tour with Manson. I stayed in my green room and I didn't talk to him. I didn't go near him. I was just like, I don't want my my perception of him to be changed right. by meeting him because I know like it's either you fifty fifty you get him being nice or him being the biggest piece of shit. Which obviously we know how that right out. yeah that um it's like yeah so it's it, it's one of those things where it's it's so crazy to have to to people that you looked up to be your friends and like text people that you were like what the hell is going on like, <laughs> yeah. so it, it's still weird it's very weird and it's it's very humbling to be you know uh you know in the position that i'm in you know after you know 20 years and like you said like that those are the bands that shaped this that made me who i am that controlled the josh balls empire you know what <laughs> i mean so it's crazy to be like hey buddy how are you today yeah it's crazy um when did you first want to start opening businesses up? Was that like during the motionless days or was it before or it was, it was during, it was one of those things where I just, I, 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 when I get an idea of something, I just go, I don't let anybody tell me otherwise. Why are you being so antsy today? <laughs> um, I don't let anybody tell me otherwise. And it was just one of those things where I, I started collecting stuff for strange when I was in motionless and it just piled up and I was like, you know what? I was like, I would love to open a store someday. I think I was like, just now is randomly the time. And I don't know why that was even the time. And I took all this stuff I collected and I was like, I opened this place in downtown Kingston, Pennsylvania, which there's no downtown. It's a street. Um, <laughs> so it was just like one of those things where I was like, I need to try this. And if I fail, I fail, but I need to at least do this. And it ended up being just, obviously at first it was slow and all this stuff. We ended up, you know, getting a second location and then, you know, down the road, opening a cafe inside of Strange and Neutral called Steamy Hollows, and all this stuff just stemmed from me being hungry and eager to be able to be, uh, and and just me being the motivated human being I am is like, I hate when people tell me I can't do something or or no. Right. I remember my accountant told me that uh, opening a retail store was the worst idea. He said it was like, he's like, might as well burn your money, and now obviously <laughs> fired him, and obviously I. <laughs> I quit a huge, you know, at the time motionless was doing super great. And I was, I took that, you know, risk to, to quit and put all of my effort into doing businesses. Well, it paid off and I'm, you know, obviously knock on wood, but everything's going great. Yeah. That's awesome. How many businesses do you own now? I don't know. <laughs> um, I have, well, the newest ones are horror hub marketplace. Right. Um, which is a marketplace which all of you guys should either shop on or if you have cool stuff that you sell, uh, be a part of it. It's almost like it, it's just an all-encompassing uh, marketplace for like-minded people like us, which is really awesome. Um, and now I have a root beer company that we're actually announcing tomorrow at 10 a.m. Nice. Eastern. Um, then I have Noir, which is the bar. I have Batty Fang, which is the salon. Um I have Steamy Hollows, The Strange and Unusual. I think that's it. Oh, and Strange Kids, which I mean, that's not really a business. That's just music, but it makes money, so I guess that's still a business. Um, I think that's it. Right. Um, I saw you have a roller coaster or something that you Oh, yeah, and the monster well. coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That's crazy. <laughs> so it's a. I forgot about the roller coaster. Um, so I teamed up with this 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 resort. They had a motor, they had a roller coaster on this mountain, and they actually like reached out to me, which is weird. Like I'm, 31 year old weird dude has a store called The Strange and Unusual, whatever, and this huge company called Camelback Resorts. They're ginormous. Like they have a hotel, they have their own indoor water park, they have, um, uh, snow the skiing and snow tubing and all this stuff. And they reached out to me. They're like, Hey, uh, we think you're the perfect person. We want to do this monster coaster. We want to do like a haunted experience. And I was like, okay, I, that's, I'm interested. And it actually like, 
it was a pandemic pre-pandemic thing and then it happened the pandemic happened they're like you know what we still want to do this and i was like okay i can still kind of figure it out um because it's a single cart so we can sanitize it and send people out oh, six, nice you know at a time so it was just one of those things where i was like okay and then we waited and then i was like ah, i guess this isn't happening and literally like two weeks before it was about to open or like three well, it was a month before it started opening like hey we're really going to go ahead with this and i was like hey, I don't know, there's a month to go and you want me to decorate and hire actors and all this stuff in a month. And then, you know, it, you know, they're like, all right, we need to figure out the paperwork, all this stuff. And then by the time I got the paperwork, signed the paperwork, all this stuff, it actually, um, it, it took, I had to do an entire roller coaster in a week. Oof. Hold on, I have to take this call. All right, that's fine. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, someone was trying to steal a ladder behind my bar. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I had it outside because I was, like, doing something outside, and I left it, and I, one of my workers walked out to have a cigarette, and they're like, um, yeah, this is dude trying to take this ladder? And I was like, no. <laughs> I wish I was ordering pizza, La Vida High. Yeah, everybody just kind of rolled in. Good. Somebody Good, yeah. from, some of your space here was yelling at you to get off the phone. <laughs> yes, I was on time. Um, so, I mean, what were we talking about? Um... The roller coaster, I think. Oh yeah, so uh thank you, Space Zebra. Look at those guys. Yes, I appreciate um, it. I wonder who it is. Who is it? Is it Jake or Bobby? That's the question. Um No, the roller coaster was awesome. I think it was it was one of those things that really tested me. Um and also working with a giant company like that was a legit pain in the ass because if you ask I was like, Hey, can I have fire? And they're like all right, we have to ask this person who has to ask risk control, who has to ask this person, then they Ooh. get approval by this person. I was like, fuck it, forget about it. Because by the time they get an answer, it's a week later, and I'm already like on to the next situation. So it definitely was a learning curve working with a corporation like that because I'm used to like everything myself, just making the decisions, like always. Right. So it was, it was really stressful, but it was at the end, like just to see people enjoying it was awesome. And to be like, to have my own coaster, like a monster coaster, was That's crazy. <laughs> pretty legit. <laughs> so what was like the first like dive into horror and like the macabre for you? Um I honestly when I was a really uh, when I was a kid and listening to um Black Sabbath, you know, just like that that darkness overcame. I, I it definitely wasn't like, I enjoyed the music because my dad liked it. But honestly, here's a big one. Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf. <laughs> nice. Because I remember seeing the motorcycle with a skull on it and, like, all this shit. And I was like, I like skulls. They're cool as fuck. <laughs> so that was kind of, like, the pinnacle. And it, it was always – I was always into – you know, I was like, what's the weirdest thing I can collect? And I remember getting, like, my first skull and my second skull and this and my first this. And then, like, getting, like, that, you know? Yeah, the face. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I, it's all, it's so, there's nothing like collecting things that are so obscure and so hard to find. And like, I have some things that people are, it's almost impossible to find that only a handful of people own those things. That's awesome. Uh, or things similar. So that's the allure to me. But yeah, first getting into it was like legit meatloaf, bat of the hell seeing skulls like being like uh introduced to that world the movie heavy metal was huge for me like oh yeah super weird eclectic like you don't know if it's darkness or what but yeah it was it's always a visual stimulation for me so that was a huge it was a huge thing i know uh like my parents were into like black sabbath acdc and like led zeppelin and all of those bands back then so i think that kind of had an influence on what i've done and my first concert was kiss when i was eight so I feel like that kind of just started everything for me. Yeah. Do you collect anything? Uh, I collect toys. A lot of toys. I have a shit ton of toys. <laughs> like robots or what kind of? I toys? mean, I've got all of the like Popco. I've got a whole bunch of Ninja Turtles over here. Um, I have about a hundred and twenty pop vinyls. I would say. Mm. I have a bunch of old like. My old 90s toys, I never got rid of any of them, so I still have all of them. Smart. I still have all of my old Pokemon cards over here Fuck, from, my like, dad the threw first mine set. Away. Yeah, yeah, I... I had all of them. <laughs> Everybody said I was a hoarder, and I'm like, no, no, I'm keeping this stuff because I want it down the line. Yep. I actually, I found a couple of cool things here, actually, that I forgot I had sitting here. I've got a bunch of old horror VHSs that were just chilling in my closet that I completely forgot that I had. 
It's just like random shit that I've got just piled up everywhere. That's what, I think that's what started my shit. I was like, I was I'm a hoarder. I can't like throw away anything. <laughs> um, my girlfriend always calls me a curated collector. But I, I like the sound of that. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's like I can't throw shit away. Like, uh, I, it sucks. Like I am a. I have a problem, which I'm, I admit at least, you know, right, I'm, right. I get it, <laughs> but I, I do collect cool shit. I, I don't have like garbage. So it's, but I just like stuff. I like weird stuff. stuff. That's a conversation piece. And I mean, it's led to a business and it's led to, so, I mean, it's worked. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been doing all right. <laughs> what was the first instrument you started with? Was it the keyboards or was it? Uh, guitar. I remember my dad bought me my first guitar and I was playing like the white stripes. I was like super pumped. I remember sitting on like my dryer being like, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> I liked guitar. I thought it was super cool. Um, but I was actually in a band in, I used to play in my basement and we had a guitar player already. We had a bass player, we had a drummer and they're like, well, we need a singer. And I was like, all right, I'll be the singer. But I was afraid to like be in front of the microphone by myself. So I grabbed a, I bought this cheap, like my dad bought it. It was like 50 or a hundred dollar, like shitty keyboard from the, the, the nineties, which is probably worth a lot of money now. Right. Who knows? I don't even remember what I did with it. Um, so I remember I would just play it and put it in front of me, play like a uh, hold a chord and sing like a, a, a shitty song. I think we like try to cover like brand new. We try to cover like, um, from first to last. Oh um, man, like weird stuff. We were <laughs> young. I think I was four, thirteen or fourteen, thirteen probably. Um, right, right. Yeah. So that was like me being introduced to keyboard. But then I remember going to uh, one of my good friends. Well, still one of my good friends, TJ Bell. Um, he he played for Motionless, and I was he's like, hey, do you want to come to a practice one day? I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and the keyboard player didn't show up, uh, and it wasn't like he wasn't like a part of the band, but he was like. So they were trying to figure out a keyboard situation and they're like, can you play this? And I was like, sure. And so I sat there and I played it and they're like, can you like headbang and play that same thing? And I was like, yeah, sure. Cause they were just like octave chords, like super easy shit. Right. <laughs> and I was like, and then that's what led to me being emotionless was just like me knowing like three major chords because back then motionless was just like, there's a choir setting and here it is. Like it was super simple, like with little tiny leads. And I was like, I can do this. And then, Get off of that fucking coyote, you dick. <laughs> Cats suck. I have one cat, and she keeps me up all night long. Yep. Mine jumps on my face and just like... Yes. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> and it's never with the claws in. It's always claws out the whole... Yep. Yeah, I but hate they it. They super hard. It's, it's weird. <laughs> um, what's the chat saying? Anything good? Um, it's funny. I have a growing collection of cassette tapes. Why are you collecting cassette tapes? That's so weird. There's a lot of people that collect a lot of strange things that you would never expect them to collect, but they're worth the stupidest amount of money. I know. It's like VHSs. I threw away so many. Oh, yeah. And now it's like some of those like box sets are worth like tons of money. And it's, then it's in the cassettes. I get, I get it, but I never got into it. Right. Um, I, uh, I've got a box with about 50 Atari 2600 games, and I've got an original Atari 2600 with all of the controllers, all of the wires and everything that I've been hanging on to. I'm waiting for that to jump up in price like crazy. Yeah, you can't. You have to have like a really old CRT TV to be able to play it because you can't just play that on a flat screen. It literally just it doesn't work. Yeah. And those funny. those CRT TVs are not easy to find nowadays because most people have busted them up for the most part. Yeah, I think that's a uh, you can smash. <laughs> why am i collecting faces i don't know i'm trying to get your face strange 189 with the beard yeah um <laughs> what's the, well speaking of what's the strangest thing that has come into your store into my store is a little different because i try not to let anything obviously that's too, too crazy come into the store um I mean, human skeletons are always a good one. I remember someone bought, lit brought literally like just a box of a skeleton in the front door, and they were just like, "Hey, my 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 mom had this upstairs in our attic, and we didn't want it anymore. Like, can you can we sell this to you?" And I was like, "Okay, sure." You know, <laughs> um, you know, always um, 
a horse. I have a fetal horse in a jar. That was that was a weird one when we first got that in uh, a long time ago, actually. Um, human skulls, things like that. Uh, but yeah, just, I mean, to me, it's super normal, I guess, and common. But I guess to some people, it's not. <laughs> what about the weirdest thing in your collection? Would it be the face? Oh yeah, <laughs> like that's. I've been trying to find one for so long, and uh, a friend is. Uh, uh, he's really like in. He's like one of the main suppliers of those type, types of things because you have to. Have, you just have to have the connections, and, right? Um, and that's all. You know, you have to have the right people. Know the right people. Know the right uh, co- other collectors. Like a lot of these things just bounce around people's collections. Um, but yeah, that's the weirdest thing. I mean, that's it's so awesome. Like it, to, it's so like you don't see it often, really, anywhere. <laughs> like I don't think I could find another person who owns a human face I at this know, point. Like, three people maybe two now that have one that's just yeah it's crazy yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's really a, a very strange situation but it's awesome oh yeah i love it um what is a really common misconception that people have about you um that i sleep in a coffin that that's makes a legit sense. <laughs> thing like people think i sleep upside down in a coffin all the time and as much as I would probably love it, the only reason I don't, because I have a casket bed for my guest bed. Um, hey, Volta, shut up. <laughs> um, ow, nails. Um, as much as I would love to, my animals can't fit in there with me. Oh, right. <laughs> Otherwise, I would. Volta, come over here. Everybody in the chat saying they would sleep in a coffin as well. <laughs> yeah, let me go get my dog and bring her over. All here. right. Also, yes, let's just throw that out there right now. I don't, I don't think I said it at the beginning. Anybody who's actually listening to this later on, every episode is filmed live on Twitch, and the whole chat gets involved, and it's a good time. It's at twitch.tv slash sin. So if anybody does want to come in for a live recording... Have at it. It's fun. It's good times. My my dogs are super spoiled, and it's the worst sometimes. My my dog is the exact same way. I have a Chihuahua, and it's just the littlest noise. He starts barking and going crazy about it, and it's <laughs> so. Uh, was it hard to walk away from the band like that with yes. the amount of success that? Because it, it was at that time, I would say it was starting to go pretty high up i would say it it was i think it was like almost the height of where you know what i mean like it was crazy um it was definitely really really weird um and i felt like i lost a part of me um it was a part of my identity it was part of who i was i was doing it for literally a decade um so it was really tough but i think it was the right decision it was just one of those things where it's we were just butting heads and i was was curious about that with like Anymore, it seems like a lot of people use backing tracks more than anything, and I don't know if that would clash with a keyboard player or how that worked. Yeah, I mean, we used tracks, um, you know, as most bands do. Uh, it was just one of those things where it's, I literally can't play everything, but I hated that about our band. I wanted to be able to record on the album with everything that we can play live, so right. it was just, like, kind of annoying. It's, like, almost, like, purposefully put in, like, five different keyboards so i would have to we'd have to put tracks and you know because i can play like a bottom uh a bottom choir sound and a lead on top of that but sometimes those uh would have a a a two a two-part uh uh octave and then a lead on top of it so i don't have three fucking hands right yeah so it was like one of those things where you're just like all right put them in fuck it um (laughs) actually my wife just said that you left just before we saw Motionless Live. What the hell? Uh, would you see them on the um, Escape the Fate tour? Um, it was... It was them, AMD Affliction, Miss May I, and William Control. Oh, okay. Yeah, I quit. I was out of there. <laughs> Were you into bands like Aiden back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Not that like was... super heavy, but I liked Aiden. I liked Aiden's, like, singles. Because I, I remember getting those um, samplers... Um, oh, the old victory samplers? Yes, those things remember, were like, so good. Last Sunrise and yeah. like that stuff. Like I really liked those songs, but I was never like 
a, a fan of Aiden like I was like him. I really liked Aiden, and I still like uh, William Control's stuff. It's really cool. Um, so, you know, yeah, definitely Aiden was, was, was a really cool thing. There seems to be, like, every every band from back then seems to be transitioning into, like, this like synth wave type sound. Like, it's becoming a big thing for all of these bands to do. Yeah. Um, they're welcome. <laughs> she started it. <laughs> no one had keyboard players. Like it's it was true. Like three. There was like three of us that had like keyboard players. Like um, I'm trying to think. Like the Devil Wears Prada. Right. Um, us. The Word Alive for a little bit. Um, um, attack Attack. An Attack Attack. I think that that might actually be it. So, but yeah, because it was like kind of uncool to have a keyboard player. It was cool, and then it was uncool at the same time. Like. But it just it grew because I thought bands were bleeding through. That's a good one. I didn't. Oh, bleeding through is a great one. That's a really good one. I didn't even think of that. I don't count them. I think they're just way too cool to even count them in there. Marta <laughs> was. We tore up bleeding through, and I was like, Marta, you are awesome. How hard was it to set up keyboards in the little ass places at the beginning, and actually uh, get the sound was... to come through properly? <laughs> um, it was actually not that bad. It's a lot easier when you have a direct line digitally. Um, than it is to be able to mic a guitar. Imagine those little shitty PA speakers trying to hold the sound of a fucking half stack. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, obviously you only mic one speaker, but it's so like loud that they can't. Um, they can't. So mine would always come through. It always come through super thin and not like thick because there was no right. subs. There was, you know, nine times out of ten there was like a sub this big and a main speaker when we first played like VFWs and stuff, but. My stuff always cut through because it was digital, so it wasn't that bad. Um, we did play a lot of small clubs, but we always made it work. We were always really good at, at, at sharing the stage. We, we always meshed very well. Like we, we knew where each other were at all the time because we always spend our time together. You know, We were together almost every day, so we understood how we were moving, what pissed who off and who pissed what off. Like Sometimes I had to sit at the back of the stage with Ange. Sometimes I had to be the front and, or off to the side where my t- keyboard sideways, but... It wasn't too bad. I mean, I don't re- I don't remember any like horrible things right. about. I mean, there was definitely times we were just like, we're just like, yeah, whatever. Like, right, right, we're gonna right. Fit in this space and fuck it. <laughs> was it um, weird to like still talk to those guys after you left the band? Was there like some kind of like a disconnect at all or uh, anything? Yeah, definitely, and that disconnect is honestly still there. Like we don't. It was like almost like we talked every day and then nothing for a while like i well i wanted to disconnect because i didn't want that feeling of like i didn't want to think that i would regret the situation right um but yeah there was definitely like we lost all communication like i don't talk to barely any of them anymore once in a while like we uh last time i saw rick and ryan was at a slipknot show um at montage mountain in scranton um Hmm. And I was just like, hey, how are you? And they're like, good. And, you know, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. And like, all right, see you later. Um, right. Or I talked to Chris, like, when Alvin, when, whenever they released an album, and I was like, you know, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. Um, I actually talked to Chris for the first time in, like, a year um, recently to ask him if he wanted to come on the Twitch. Nice. So that was interesting. I was like, either he's not going to answer me or he's just going to say no. And he was, I mean, obviously he's really friendly. So we were just like, he's like, yeah, I'd love to when I have time, you know? And I was like, so how did you get, uh, linked up with space zebra? How did that whole thing go about? I've known Bobby for fucking forever. Right. I mean, me and Bobby have been best friends for years and we've always understood each other. And he's one of literally my favorite people in the entire world. He's always, you know, if he says he's going to do something, he does it. And I respect that so much in a human being. And he's just like, we share the same mindset with a lot of things. And, you know, when it came to doing the podcast, you know, first he was just doing the podcast with Wes and he asked me to do haunted Fridays. And he's like, you know what? I would, I I love having you on blah, blah, blah. Let's do this Twitch thing together. The three of us. Cause I think we can, we, 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 you know, the three of us together have good conversation. Um, so it was just one of those things where it just made sense. But yeah, I mean, I've known Bobby for, since he was like a merch guy. Right. um, Yeah. For bless the fall. Oh wow! And, and bleeding through, and you know when he was in his, he, he was in a band at one time, at one point, and like, you know, we just understood each other. You know when, and and I always support anything he does, anytime, even if it sucks. I'd be like, all right, what are we doing? Let's do it. Like, right. 
Um, so it, it always made sense. Did you think it would take off as fast as it did, the Twitch? No, I still don't get Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. It's cool. I can't believe how, like, um, how, how supportive people have been. Like, the guests we've get, been getting, like, is insane. Like, um, I, I don't know. Like, we just ask people, and they're like, okay. And we're like, really? Are you sure you want to do this? Um, okay, come on. I mean, that's what that's how I have felt just for these past couple of podcasts. Like, really? Are you sure? Like, are, really? <laughs> See, people are generally pretty nice. That's that's um, what I and, have found out. Like, and it's honestly just about asking. Like, it doesn't hurt to ask. You know, it's like, and obviously you're a huge supporter of what we do. So it's like, it, it was almost like, you know, I may be busy, but there's always an hour I can spare to just be like, hey, whatever. Like, what do we do? You know, what are we doing? Well, right, awesome. right. I support the people that support me always, you know, and people come in the store. They're like, yo, I need blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Like, how do I help you? You know? And, and that's what also why me and Bobby get along so well is like, we're always down to help people and, and support people and, and, you know, be there for people that, you know, that need it. And that's, that's been like a big thing with Twitch is just linking up with people. It seems like it's so much easier to link up with people on Twitch. And then you got, yeah. you like, you guys find all of these bands that it's insane that they're not signed. I know it. It kind of blows my mind a little bit because they're like the quality's there, the musicianship is there, but it's just the exposure that's not there for the most part. It just sucks because everything's so oversaturated. Like, not even with bands, just humanity is oversaturated yes. on social media. So it's hard to cut through as a band. I remember being on MySpace with Motionless and being like, the way you get your band heard was you just grassroots it you comment on people's stuff like you can't do that anymore like it literally like it instagram and facebook do not support being a musician musician and right. it really sucks well that's the same thing with twitch anymore there's at any one point in time there's over a million people streaming on twitch at every point in time so if you're not doing something completely out of the norm then you're just kind of just dying yeah. instantly which is, well, I mean, you guys have all these, like, musicians coming in and everything and, like, actors. And, like, that has helped a ton with the exposure, at least. Because exposure is a really hard thing to get on the internet nowadays. It, it really is. It's just, like, but just having those friends and those networking, like, all these people that have been on our Twitch have been our friends. Like, or people that we know. So that's why it's been, you know, years and years and years of, like, making friends and connections like that's why i tell people it's so important to just go and shake people's hands right uh, obviously pre or post covid but it's so important to just be like to introduce yourself to people to get out there i know it's really hard like when i first started in the band i was a super introvert and i'm still kind of an introvert but like i can sit here and con i don't really know you like right. we're like you know now acquaintances but i can sit here and have a, have a conversation with you easily because i understand the value of a conversation and how important it is and you know the and, and hearing people so you know i think just going out and shaking people's hands and, and just networking and you know you know go, breaking out of your shell and just like i said it doesn't hurt to ask or it doesn't hurt to like whatever like i'll be out to eat dinner sometimes and people are like yo like blah, blah blah can i get a picture i'm just like later but of course right right you know yeah I, mean? so I think that's so important um so yeah that's how that goes I like that's kind of like how I would see everything, but it's more or less just like putting out positive energy at all times. Because if you're always putting out negative energy, you're gonna always gonna get negative energy back. Like I, that's my whole belief system is just energies to begin with. I mean, it's true. I mean, I would never respond to negativity when people posted it towards me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, because I mean, it was never like I never did anything shitty, but it was always like you shouldn't have done this you shouldn't have said this thing but i don't i don't comment to those people i don't like give them the time of day i i comment back to the people that radiate positivity towards me right so it you know it lends a hand to that next positivity and now people whenever they reach out to me it's never negativity it's always positivity so like when you when you shine that light people will shine it back right 100 percent um well speaking of energies has there ever has there ever been ever has there ever been anything in the store that you knew just had a really, really bad vibe to it? Yeah, actually, there's this. Actually, I just did a like uh, a spooky podcast thing for like my local news station. It was really weird. 
but we talked about this picture that we had on the wall that was like probably 19 early 1900s chalk um portrait of a husband and a wife and whenever you walked past it there would be this cologne smell that you'd smell um and we didn't know what it came it started happening when that photo came in and went away as soon as that photo went so but we'd smell the photo and it didn't smell like this cologne but like when you like walked past it at certain times you'd smell that cologne you'd just be like this, is this dude and this is the energy that he's giving out i was like we need to get the hell out of here that's just that's crazy i wouldn't mm-hmm. <laughs> is that like a, a normal thing that has happened there like do, does it happen often or no not really like I, I like i said in this podcast is like i accept it and i know that it's there so i think it kind of leaves me alone because i respect the um what it is and at the entity of what it is and it's it's just trying to find something for itself whether it be negative or positive it just wants answers and it's like if i can't give it to them they just kind of like yeah right so so uh we do a lot of like retro gaming and stuff here did you game a lot when you were younger at all no not really i mean i got into i played like mario um a lot of like i loved zelda oh yeah i loved um like super smash bros and uh transylvania and um castle trans uh, you know castlevania yeah castlevania yeah. yes and like then like uh what's the driving one mario and oh uh i mean there's mario kart i just talked to mario kart I just talked yeah, about the yeah, other yeah. day but yeah like mario kart i was really into but i wasn't really into like i played a little bit of halo but yeah i i, I didn't i couldn't afford gaming systems so i didn't really get into them honestly right what about like toys back in the day were you a big toy guy or no not really um i really got into things with wheels and motors uh that's what i really kind of loved i loved motorcycles and cars and things like that and i would always like get these hob job bullshit motorcycles or dirt bikes or things that should be thrown away and try to like tinker with them but i mean i enjoyed toys i like things that are like technologically advanced like i have a drone and things like that i like things that are just an experience in themselves um i'm trying to think what kind of toys i even had I was like I said I didn't have much money when I was a young kid so right. it, it was we didn't get too many things like I remember army men I loved army men and like wrestling action figures but that's about it oh yeah I was I was I'm still in I'm still huge into wrestling but like back in yeah. the day it was huge huge for me I yeah. trained for a little while but I just I walked away from that yeah um what kind of cars do you have currently um I have, well, I have a truck. Um, I have a Challenger. Um, I have a 1923 Model T. I have a 1961 Corvair. I have a, a BMW i8. I have a 1955 Divco milk truck. I have a Harley. I just bought a new Triumph Scrambler. Nice. Um, I have another like Kawasaki Vulcan, a couple dirt bikes, a couple quads. Um, I just sold my hearse. I had a hearse for a little while. That would be sick. Um, I gave it, actually traded it to this dude that gave me the face for like human stuff. So I literally traded a car <laughs> for, for dead shit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always changing. I mean, right now that's what it's in my collection. Chat. Does chat have any questions at all? They're like, no. I think I kind of just threw that out there really quick. <laughs> I'll read it and see what anybody says. Everybody left. Everyone went home. I'm sure there's a delay. <laughs> I would like to have, like, an older car. I think my dream car would be a 67 GTO. Oh, I love GTOs. They're really sick. They're, um, like, the hard top with the <clears throat> automatic train. Like, yeah, I've always wanted one, but they're just so expensive. Cause... They are really expensive. You cannot see my dogs because they're upstairs napping, and the one is just barking in the kitchen somewhere. Um... <laughs> No, I mean, cars are cool. I mean, the things with older cars I learned is I I used to have my only car was a 1954 Chevy Bel Air. And it was a mistake because it always broke down and I didn't have a car half the time. So it was just like one of those situations where you can have those cars, but have a reliable car too. I I noticed that a lot whenever anybody tries to get cars, they like get rid of their like daily driver and get this like hoopty garbage. And Oh, there's a bunch of questions that are coming in now. 
What's my favorite? What's the? What's your favorite place? Scary place where you where we live? Um, I like the Hollenbach Cemetery. That's my favorite place. It's in Wilkes Bear. Um, very cool vibe. Um, it's beautiful as well, which is awesome. Um, any advice I would give on someone dealing with depression? Um, that's a tough one. I deal with depression every day, um, and it's it's one of those things where the person that controls that is you, and that's the unfortunate part is you control how you feel every day, and that's it, that's the terrifying situation is the only person that's going to get you out of that is you, and you have to see the positivity in things that are around you and that's the it's super hard i get it like especially with seasonal depression for for this area it's it's so tough but honestly find something to be passionate about and don't let failures get ahead of you you know failures are good sometimes failures make you learn how to succeed you know i've failed in many things and those failures taught me how to to succeed in those things and you know, it's tough with depression when you have your parents and these things are, are friends that are being shitty or whatever, but it's it's all something that you can control and, and that's step, taking a step in a positive direction. And it's I know that sounds, I'm making it sound easy, but, you know, that's kind of what I try to do. I try to motivate myself and do projects and, and keep myself moving and, 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 and also always being positive because once you radiate positivity, people radiate positivity back and it turns into that. Right, right. And I would have to say, don't be afraid to reach out to people as True. well. Yep, yep. Don't uh, Keeping it bottled in is probably the worst thing that you can do because it's just going to build up more and more and more. And especially like in this community and like the Space Zebra community, there's the Discord. I know there's a ton of people in there who all support each other and they all want what's best for everyone else. Yep. 100%. Um, so was it difficult starting the strange unusual? No, because you know what I did? I just went for it and it was awesome. Like it was just one of those things where you're just like, if you, if you dwell on things, you're going to keep picking them apart and peeking the bar and never, you know, make that decision. I have this, this, I have this conversation with my friend all the time. He wants to start this business. He has all these great ideas. He has everything right there, but what's stopping him is, is himself. He's like afraid to take that last step of like opening your business. So like what I do is I just go, we're fucking doing this. Let's do this and figure it out along the way. I, I literally figure everything out on the way, on the fly. And whether that's a terrible thing or not, fuck it. Um, wait, any quiz, question? Any tips for as, as, aspiring musicians? Yes, be patient. Be patient and love what you do, and your time will come. Nick Sir Rifster, that's the man. <laughs> oh, there's Timmy Taylor. I saw him earlier. Um, seasonal depression on top of regular depression is not great. Only thing I have to say is what up all of them back in the day. Called we used to play a game at shows in PA called Where's Balls because you were always kicking it in the crowd watching bands play. <laughs> hmm. Like the Halloween show at Crock Rock is a great example. We never said what's up, but we I remember that show. That's crazy. You should have said hello. Let's see. But yeah. I mean it's 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 tough. Everything's tough, but like I said, it's all about yourself. I mean, look at you, you're starting this Twitch, like what you know, it's, it's about just doing it, whether you're ready or not, like whether you don't have the right lighting yet, you, whether like, I remember when we first started, I was twitching from my bathroom. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm still, I'm like downstairs in the foyer. Like if you look to my house, I'm literally in the foyer of my house. Like, which is a super nice house. Definitely. Thank you. How it's old is that house? Uh, 130 years old, 100, wow. 130 years old. So when you first moved in, how much money did you have to pour into it? So much money. <laughs> it sucks. It sucked and it still sucks. I like literally just like um, had a bunch of stuff fixed recently and the guy gave me a bill and I almost like died uh, for real though. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what the fuck? And something's always wrong. Like always wrong. And I get to fix this and fix that. And it's a learning curve. And I, I do a lot of the work myself which is really nice because I know I love working with my hands, but it was, it's one of those things where you're just like, everything costs so much money because it's old and you have to like, you tear one thing out and all everything else is an issue. That, yeah, everything's broken like when behind I first, it. <laughs> when I first bought the house, I was like, there was a problem with the plumbing and I was like, like there was, cause it was like left abandoned for a couple of years. Um, the guy just didn't care about it that I bought it from. And he left, he didn't like, during the winter, he didn't drain all the water out of Ooh. the pipes. So I turned the water on and a pipe burst. And I was like, oh, I'll just fix this little, this little part, which I can do. I fixed it and I turned it on again. And then two feet down, 
another pipe burst. And I was like, all right, I'll fix this. And then I turned it on again, and then another one burst. So I literally had to tear out and redo every piece of plumbing oh, in this house. This house is 6,500 square feet Ooh. and has three floors <laughs> and four bathrooms. It costs so much fucking money. I wanted to, like, literally jump into traffic. <laughs> Actually, that's another good question. How did you get into the coffee business? How did that come about? Um, I just love the idea of a community of a cafe. I think it's 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 brilliant. I think it's awesome. Um, I really wasn't super into coffee. Uh, my girlfriend is actually super well versed in coffee. She's like a, literally a professional, at, uh, so she helped and and made those things happen. And I have a, uh, I had a business partner uh, Zach who uh, I, I got the name Steamy Hollows from. They had one in New York. But it was like one of those things like I wanted that experience of that community inside the store because I knew that that would grow and be such a cool thing to be able to offer when you like, oh, you can buy a human skull and get a butterbeer on the way out. See you later. Nice. Oh, uh, yes, he does sell coffee. It's on the Space Super website. That's true. It's great coffee, actually. It's locally roasted. Um, it's uh, called Strange Brew, which is awesome. Um, um, how, how hard was it? to run a business during COVID. Very tough. Very like at, at the first few months of COVID where everything shut down was terrifying. I actually had to close my Philly store because of it. Um, because we were just like, there's, there was no sight of reopening and Philly was never as a city cities were hurt the most. Right. So it was just like one of those things where I had to close. And if it wasn't for me getting like selling hand sanitizer and masks, I probably would be in a very worse spot, but we serve an experience. So, People really like ganged up together and really like, you know, our local people and uh, people online and the people that support us really like went out of their way and really supported us. And I really can't complain. And they did, they did such a good job and they kept, kept us afloat for those, for those times. And now that like Pennsylvania's a little bit weird, different, they're like wild, wild west. And they did, you know, we were still available to have shopping and things like that. So it was okay. It wasn't bad. You know, I'm a person that's always positive. I was like, all right, let's figure out, let's figure out how do we do this, figure out how do we do this. So. It was just one of those things. It's a new learning, something new to learn. I know Ohio is basically like the exact same way. Like yeah. nothing really shut down, shut down. I mean, they slowed down for a little bit, but nothing really closed, closed. Yeah. Um, do you think it's easier to run businesses in Pennsylvania than it would be to have them in California? Yes. California has so many rules. It's absurd. I'm actually opening a... I'm a small partner in this, this, uh, that we actually just announced like last week. I actually forgot. That's another business. Uh, how would I forget? Um, it's a carnival and circus themed bar restaurant on Hollywood Boulevard oh, nice. in uh, LA. Um, and it's, it was so difficult because there's so many things that you have to get permits and approved for that it's just like outrageously ridiculous. And they like hammer down on you super hard for no reason. So it is way difficult. Pennsylvania is the wild, wild west, and I love it so much, <laughs> and I will never leave. I would I would say that's probably a good thing. Um, what, what's, uh, what is the business about? Like, what, what do you have going on there? At the, the, new, the new restaurant? Yeah. Is it so like... it's just going to be an experience base. It has a stage. We're going to have, like, live music. We're going to have um, themed food and themed drinks that all it's like almost like we're bringing a circus to a central a central location so i feel like that's kind of like the way you do all of your businesses is the theme for the yeah. most part yeah you have to you have to these days you have to create an experience with anything you do whether it's a store a brand anything it's like create something that people will love and support and be passionate about so it's just the you know it's it's my formula of how i do things and i'm really pumped on it and uh even with some new projects that i'm also working on uh in the in the near future it's like it's just how i see things and i that's how i want to live things and i want to i just want to experience things like i think about going to like universal or disneyland and just they create the experience from the second you walk in to the second you leave and i love that right I'm also a child, like at heart, <laughs> so like I want to have fun. I I agree with that a hundred percent. I've got toys all around me right now. <laughs> um, is do you do you find like 
nor I guess I guess you could call them normies coming into these places. Like, have you ever had any issues with anybody, or has it all no, been really no, positive? Every, everyone really is very acceptable, except acceptable, accepted, except except I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you get it. Yeah, everyone accepts it when they walk in the door, and I love that so much to see people's, you know, especially older people come in and just be like, "I love this. This is this is amazing. I, I get it." And and that's what's awesome. Like I've had some people come in and go, "Oh hell no," and turn around and leave. <laughs> um, but besides that, you know, ninety five percent of the people are just like, "Man, this is so cool. It's so interesting," and I love that they accept the the challenge almost of like. You guys are weird. I want to see what it's all about. <laughs> Do you have any other businesses in mind planned out or yeah, anything that you're you. thinking of? Yeah, so many. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you want to say? <laughs> no. Uh, well, I mean, I could kind of talk about this one. It's like not set in stone yet. I'm trying to um, partner up with this old theater um, that's in my area and take it over. And, and, you know, I always wanted to own my own theater. I thought that was cool. You know, I'm in the talks of, of taking it over and, you know, I think it'd be really cool to create those experiences inside of a, you know, I, I, people think it's a dying uh, art, but I think it's because they're doing it wrong. And I think a person like me will hopefully bring light in a thing that, you know, everything says like, oh, everything's going to Netflix or Hulu. Or I was like, yeah, but you're missing it. And I was like, I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to take this um, place that went out of business and I just want to, you know, flip it around and right put the, put the josh balls touch on it but there's so many other things that i'm also working on um i'm building a studio um which would be cool for bands to come and record and uh you know be able to experience that you know a, a legit place to be to record their band um in in our area because a lot of those like good studios are in the city you know so it's hard to find a good studio so i want to create that here so uh, that's another project that i'm working on that would be really cool. A great engineer that way we hired to, to put it all together. And, um, you know, obviously I'll be there to, you know, anybody has questions or they want to collab and do things like that. Cause obviously strange kids, I want to further that as well. Speaking of strange kids, have you been writing anything lately for yeah, that? We're actually coming out with a, a new song probably by the end of this month or the early, early next month. It's a cover, but we put our own spin on it. Almost like midnight, the stars and you, uh, cover kind of we did we kind of took inspiration from that um so it, it's a, a, a thing like that so it's we were working on new music it's just getting me and jake in the same uh the same mind frame the same time to be able to do things right 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 somebody says the theater located near scranton i'm not gonna say anything yet well there you that's go that's all you get <laughs> All right, well, it's been about an hour. I think we could we could call it there. I appreciate you being on. And I'm gonna, go uh, my, I'm gonna go feed my dogs and then take a bath because I have arthritis and I'm 31 I, years I, old. I feel that like the hands are starting to just yep. My back like all day today was like throbbing and like it goes up the whole side of my body. Um, it, it's I can't believe how old I feel, but I. I <laughs> My mind is young. Oh, actually, I forget everything. Yes. Anything, I, like, I'm horrible at remembering things, and my body, like, fails me sometimes, but it I, is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it happens. I'm ready to die, though, you know? <laughs> like, I'm, I, I've, I've lived, I've done cool shit. If someone wants to just be like, Josh, you need to just die today, I'd be like, <laughs> okay. I'd be like, see you later. Like, we're good. Like, I have a great life, so it's, well, it's all right. <laughs> thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Of course. I'm going to end it on, like, the darkest note ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good night. You have then... a good night. Thank you, chat, for hanging out. And yes, thank make you, Make sure you sub to, to Captain Sin's channel, and make sure to see us on uh, our Space Zebra. We'll be back on tomorrow for an early show, which is awesome, and I'm also announcing a new business tomorrow. So nice. go on my Instagram. I think we're announcing at 10 a.m. Eastern, so I'll see you guys there. All right. See you. Thanks. See you.